the theory, methods, and algorithms used to do sense of fusion and nonlinear filtering relies heavily on mathematical statistics. In order to follow this course, we therefore recommend that you have a good understanding of some basic statistical concepts. To help you out, we have put together these set of lectures where we'll go through the most important concepts on a fairly high level. Our hope is that what we present here is not new to you, but rather a refresher on things that you already know. However, if you feel that some of these concepts that we present here are unfamiliar to you, we would highly recommend that you take some time and read up on these. In this first lecture, we're going to discuss random variables. When we do nonlinear filtering, we need them to describe the quantity that we're interested in. For example, the position of a vehicle. We also need random variables to describe the observations that we want to filter. To describe our random variables, we use a so-called probability mass function for discrete valued random variables, and a so-called probability density function for continuous valued random variables. Let's start by looking at discrete valued random variables for which we describe their properties using a probability mass function or PMF for short. Now, the probability mass function of a discrete valued random variable is in this course denoted as PR of Z or just capital P of Z. But we will mostly be using this notation in this course. Note also that we are using braces here to indicate that Z is a discrete valued random variable. Now, our probability mass function need to have the following properties in order to be proper probability mass functions. First, the probability that our discrete valued random variable Z is equal to some integer value i, which is written like this, needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, one way to view this value here is if we collect many values of Z, the fraction of these that are equal to i is given by this number here and this needs to hold for all values of i. The second property of our probability mass function is that if we sum over all values of z, this sum needs to be one. That is, the probability that z takes any value needs to be one. We can also note that as a consequence of these two, we cannot have a probability mass for a value i that is greater than one, which seems to be reasonable, right? Now, if we look at this using the example of a fair dice, the probability mass function for the face value that we get if we roll the dice can be written like this. So the dice has six faces with the value one through six, which each is equally probable. So the probability that Z is i is equal to one six, if i is equal to one, two, and so on up to six, and zero otherwise. If we visualize this PMF, it would look something like this, where we only have probability mass for discrete values. I would encourage you to verify for yourself that this is a PMF here, which has both of these properties here, and that you understand why that is. Now, let's look at the corresponding description for continuous valued random variables, which we call the probability density function, or PDF for short. So the probability density function of a continuous valued random variable is denoted as lowercase p of z. And again, the probability density of any value of z needs to be greater or equal to zero. And if we integrate p of z over all values of z, this integral needs to be one. Now again, the interpretation of this is that the probability that z takes some value always needs to be one. However, it does not follow that p of z has to be lower than one for all values of z, as in the discrete case. We only require that it should integrate to one. So the probability density for some value of z could actually be greater than one. Let's look at an example of a continuous value random variable, z, which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 2 pi. So here, z could, for example, be a stochastic angle. The PDF of z can then be written like this, where we have 1 over 2 pi if z is within the interval of 0 to 2 pi, and 0 otherwise. Now we get 1 over 2 pi here as 
all angles are equally probable in a uniform distribution and the size of the interval is 2 pi. So 1 over 2 pi. If we visualize this density, it will look something like this. If we want to relate a probability mass function to the probability density function, we can consider the discrete valued random variable describing the event that said is in some interval A. So we have some interval here, which we call A, and we want to know if said is within this interval. Now, the probability mass that said is in this interval can be written like this. So, said is in A, and can be calculated by integrating PDF over the interval A. So this is the integral of the PDF. So in this case, the PMF is the integral of the PDF.